Hello. All right. So today's project is kind of like a precursor to the couture suit. And that whole project in itself is going to take a long time with many steps. And because I'm making it for someone who is, you know, on the other side of the country, I have to ship things. They try them. It comes back. So the first step I need to do is try to make sure that I have a skirt pattern that is going to fit correctly because I don't want to have to adjust anything when I actually use my real fabric. So the pattern that I am going to be using is this one here. Can you see it? It is a simplicity pattern and it is a pencil skirt. I love this pattern for a few reasons. Um, it, it's a basic pencil skirt, which is what I want. It has the two pleats in the front and the two pleats in the back, which is what I want. Um, it's classic lines, you know, and it actually has a, uh, an option. It's kind of hard to tell on the picture. But it has an option here where there's a flap around the front. And the final couture suit that I'm going to be making is going to have that wrap front. So, you know, you kind of get a, a quick preview. But the pencil skirt pattern, you just need to make sure that it's basic, that it fits really well. And then you kind of, we'll kind of take that and adapt it later. So, first step is I need to make this skirt. I am going to be just doing a um, basic front, not the wrap, and the actual pattern itself has a cute little like pleated kick pleat in the back, so that'll be cute. Um, it's That won't carry over, but the overall shape will. So let me show you how I'm going to get started cutting this out. So this is just a quick look at the front piece and um, I just wanted to show you a way that I try to get the correct sizing for someone who is not here okay and um, so basically I cut out when I had her in my sewing room for just a little bit I cut out a very oversized just large rectangular piece of fabric a larger one for the front and two narrower ones for the back because the back is two pieces Okay, and just kind of drapes that over her. Now, when I'm going to pin it, what I need to do when I'm, when I'm fitting it on her, I know that approximately the pleats are going to be three quarters of an inch. Okay, so when I'm pinning it on her, I'm trying to make sure that when I'm pinning my two darts, they're three quarters of an inch each. And then by doing it that way, I can make sure that when I'm pinning my side on her, and I make sure that the side seam is, you know, right under her armpit where the side seam should be, um, then I can bring that in and get any difference. So anyway, fudging all of that together, and this is the line where I thought that it would be good for her darts to end based on her body shape, which is oh, probably about half an inch shorter than on here, so I'll probably make that adjustment. But folding it in half then, you know, because that's how the pattern is, they're not going to be exact because I was pinning it on her, but um, I can match that up to the pattern because I tried to give myself 5 eighths of an inch outside of what I thought my stitch line would be, and I can match that up to what the sewing, the cutting line should be, and it comes out pretty darn exact to this cutting line. 
And so I'm feeling pretty confident about that. So she's also a petite. She's, she is a shorter girl. And so I need to shorten this by quite a bit. This line here is where she wants her finish length to be. And it only calls for an inch and a half hem. So I'm going to need to shorten the pattern like way up here. But so those are the two alterations I'll be doing to make it fit with her body type. Is shortening it here and probably uh, raising the end point of these um, darts. And it's the same with the back. You know, I have her back pieces. Now I um, tried it on her with a one inch seam allowance in the back, but when I lay it over my pattern, I just adjust it so it's only five eighths because that's what the pattern has. And again, it lined up just exactly with this size. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. Let me go ahead and make a couple pattern alterations and then we're gonna cut it out. The fabric I'm gonna do for this one is just a plain black suiting, you know, it's a, it's a poly cotton suiting kind of fabric. And there we go. So this is my skirt front. And again, this is an adjustment for a petite. Um, and everybody's different, so do your thing. So I'm basically laying my fabric on here so that my cutting line is about on top. And I wanted to make sure that the placement for this, the bottom of her darts is here. So I put my ruler there and I'm folding my fabric over. And I'm just going to draw that line straight across there. Okay, so you can see I have my line here. So I need to move this dot up there. So basically I'm just gonna put it there, right in the middle, okay? And then what I need to do is adjust the lines from this point up here to my new dot. So I want it to cut through this. Not necessarily up here, but um, like this. So I'm going through my, my matching point. And this isn't a huge adjustment, but it's enough that it'll make a difference on her body shape, okay? So when I'm making my dart, it's gonna be at this location. Now, I am making all these adjustments right on my original pattern, okay? And instead of tracing it and making a new one and everything, and I'll tell you why, I think it's more accurate using this one and if I need to change something, and it's a lot of change, I can buy another one exactly like this for $1.99 when they're on sale and just have a clean copy to start with. So, um, you know, if it was a rare thing, a vintage thing, a one-of-a-kind thing, that would be different. But this is a standard in-stock simplicity pattern, so I don't have a problem with it. Anyhow, there you go. So what I'm going to do now is mark... Uh, where I want my finished edge to be, okay, which is here, and then it calls for an inch and a half hem, which should be right here, okay, so this is at an inch and a half, all right, now over here on this side, it's, it's tapering in because it is a pencil skirt. So, well, first what I'm going to do is just cut this straight across the whole way. Okay. And then I need to fold it on my hemline here. Like this. Okay, and it's not very much at this point, but you can see on this one where it kicks out. Okay, I need to do that. And so what I'm doing is I'm tracing underneath the sewing, the cutting line here, which is going to give it the amount of flare that I need. And then I can just come in and cut it at that point up to that hemline and then straight up. All right, so I'm gonna be doing the same thing with the back piece, adjusting the darts and adjusting the length and adding the little
layer point and then we'll work on fabric. Okay, I just wanted to point out one quick little thing here while I'm dealing with pattern. Um, the piece that I'm going to be needing for using with my couture suit is this piece 9 that does not have all the vent and everything on it. So I'm going ahead and making the same modifications on this one right now as I am on piece 2, which is the one for this skirt. And the difference is this one has a big uh, pleated vent in the back. Now because I am shortening it quite a bit, my vent's going to be a lot shorter. So there's basically only three pieces to this pattern. Um, I have a back, a front that I'm cutting on the fold, and then up here, I'll move it, there's a waistband piece here. And so when I fold it, I actually have my selvage here, so it's a little bit staggered just to use economically. So I'm going to go ahead and pin these and cut them out. And um, my fabric does have some stretch to it. So I'm not being, you know, overly paranoid about making sure my straight of grain is straight. But if you do have just the plain woven I, and your fabric is terrible, I would go ahead and rip it before you lay this out just to make sure everything is straight up and down. All right, so the first thing I need to do is it wants you to stay stitch across the tops of the skirt pieces of both of them before you start sewing pleats and darts and things like that. Um, but you know, I want to use a stay tape and I actually found a new one and I want to try it out on here. Um, it's one that I bought off of Etsy and what it is, it's cut on a bias. Okay. I think it's kind of cool because it, the tape itself, it's fusible. It's on a bias, but then it has a piece of a stay tape stitched to it. So the concept is that you can curve it because it's on a bias, but this sewn part here is going to keep it nice and taut. So I think that's pretty cool. So I'm going to be trying that out on this pattern. So I'm going to be putting it across the top. All right, so this is my skirt front. It's one long piece. There will be two darts on each side, but I'm going to go ahead and put this stuff on first. You know, I'm going to give it a shot. All right, so I want to place it so my stay stitching is actually about half an inch down. That's what I would be doing if I was sewing this. So I want the part that's going to be the most resistant to stretch at about that same level. So what that means is that I am putting the uh, wider part up towards the top. So I'm going to do that. And this tape is one centimeter wide so that will fit inside of the seam allowance really well. We shouldn't have any problems. And I'm just going to fuse it straight across. And I'm going to do the same thing to the upper back pieces uh, with the stay tape along the very top. Okay, so with the stay stitching on up there, uh, the next thing I need to do is mark out for all of my darts. And um, just going to use the same piece, flip it over and mark this side. But like always, I am going to punch out the circles with my little punch here, which pops the holes out. Remember, these are the circles that I, I changed because I had to shorten the placement of those, the bottom of these darts. Hmm. Okay. So I'm going to be using, since this is black and the heat uh, erasable pins do not do well on black, the white ones, I don't recommend the white ones though, red and black and blue ones do really well though. So I'm just going to line it up and then with my little pencil, I can just draw my little dart marks. And I am also going to make a line right here, marking my center front, that usually comes in handy. So let me flip this over and mark the same uh, darts on this side. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and pin my darts. And the darts, they aren't straight down. They're actually kind of at an angle towards the outside edge. So I put my pin down in the um, one little mark, back up in the other one. 
And down here, I'm just going to pick up a thread down in that bottom circle. So I can push this straight through and hold that up on top. And that gives me the fold line that I need for my dart. And then I can just tuck these guys in. Um, now, actually, what I should have done is I like to mark the sewing line of my darts also. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this one on here right now. This is my stay tape right here. But it actually works pretty well if I draw it ahead of time. That way I don't have to mess with the pins. So now if I've drawn that one, all I have to do is put down in one dot, back up, and the next one, get this guy out of the way. that so it folds in half and I already have my sewing line on there so I'm going to go ahead and do that for all four pleats on the top front of this skirt and actually there are also four pleats on the back there's um, two in each section so doing the same process of you know punching out my marks marking it folding it and everything so that when I go to the machine I can be ready to sew all of the darts both on the fronts and back pieces. Okay, so I have everything marked and everything pinned and when I go to sew it, I start up here at this edge and come in. Oh, so I am serging the side seams of my back piece and um, I just wanted to remind that when I'm serging it to serge my so I can press my seams open, I try not to cut off much of any fabric here. I try to mainly just trim off these excess little threads but keep it so that my um, overall piece has the same size seam allowance when I start as when I finish okay just like that and if you're doing the same view that I am, I actually thought my camera was on when I did this other part, but apparently it was not. So I can't show you, but be careful when you're surging up and down that you make sure that you don't actually go too far. So um, let's see, if this is the long edge coming straight down, you know, the parts that are like angling back up, you can just fold them out flat. The parts that are coming up to a peak, sew till your needle gets to the last place it's going to stitch, right here. Come on, focus. You're going to sew to the place that your needle's going to make its last stitch. Lift the presser foot, lift the needle, rotate the whole thing, and then sew down. You know, open that flat up here, get your needle to the very end, lift the presser foot, lift the needle, turn it, and go on. So that way you can make sure that your fabric is going to stay in the same size, but you have it um, enclosed in surging stitches here. All right, so with that done, I am going to actually start working on this whole center back area. And um, I'm going to be needing to make these pleats up before I can sew this seam. So the first thing is to make sure that you have all of your markings on there. And I'm marking it on the wrong side. And I am, you know, drawing my lines. So when I mark it, I'll fill in my little circle here. And at the very bottom, I'll put a little hash mark at the bottom of those lines. So that then I can come back with a ruler and draw those lines on. I'm going to go ahead and mark this on both sides of my back piece. Alright, so I am matching up my center backs, um, making sure that I have all of my markings lined up here. So, alrighty. So, here's the thing. Um, I just looked through my stash and I actually don't have a short black zipper. And the, I think I've used up all my zippers over the years. So the only one I have is either a black invisible zipper or a navy blue one. So I need to order more. And I don't want to use an invisible zipper on a skirt back. So invisible zippers are fabulous, but they're not as strong as a standard zipper. And if it's a, a place that's going to be under 
a significant amount of pressure, I would rather not put an invisible zipper right here because this is just for fitting and I don't know if it's going to be tight when she sits or whatever, you know. So I want to put a standard zipper. But because I'm putting a navy blue one in, it doesn't match exactly, obviously. I'm going to be doing a lapped zipper here because that's going to camouflage my zipper, I think, um, better than just a centered zipper. So with that, um, with that kind of placement, what I can do is they want you to uh, work on these seams here first and then put in the zipper and that will work with me for a lap zipper. For an invisible zipper, I want to put that in first and then come down here. So lapped zipper it is. So what I'm going to be doing is from the point of my notch to this point here, which is the top of my vent area, that's just a regular 5 8 seam. On this line, the rest of the way down, it's going to be a longer basting stitch seam. Okay? And then up here, when it comes time to put my zipper on, I'm going to be pressing this open 5 8 And usually for a lap zipper, I like a wider seam allowance, but we're just going to make it work this time. So let me go ahead and put this, zip, this uh, regular stitch in and that basting stitch in. Thank you. 